Hey there, Emma here. And in 2023, I hosted a painting challenge called Dogtober, where we painted a different dog breed every day of the month. You may have seen some of the clips that I posted on shorts at the time, just showing like a few little clips from each painting, but I've decided to go and pull out the real time footage and share them this year so you can follow along if you'd like to. A couple of disclaimers slash explainers. The point of the challenge for me was that I wanted to try and loosen up. I'm a realistic portrait artist and so I gave myself a smaller size to work with as well as a time frame. I'm painting on roughly about A6 size paper, which is pretty small. In terms of measurements, that's like roughly 10 and a half centimeters by 14.8 centimeters or 4.1 by 5.8 inches. And I also tried to set myself a time limit of about 15 minutes. I really wanted to challenge myself to loosen up, but you can approach this any way you like. Maybe you'll do it in a different medium or a certain color palette. The options are endless, totally up to you, but you're more than welcome to follow along. And these are kind of like mini tutorials. I do want to point out though, that as this was unusual for me and a challenge to me, not all of them are that good. <laughs> I really struggled in the beginning to start loosening up and particularly struggled with the long haired dogs, but you know, it's an adventure and you'll see me progress through the month and learn a lot. If you wanna grab the outline sketches, I have put all 31 sketches into a document, a PDF that you can download from my website. I will link that in the description. You'll just need to pop your email address in, which will sign you up to my mailing list, but then you'll get the document with all 31 outline sketches, roughly about the same size that I'm painting. You're more than welcome to print them, trace them, size them up or down if you need to. I'll be working with my usual set of supplies and mixing colors as well, but I will talk you through the process as we go. Let's jump in. Day 20 of Dogtober and we are painting an Italian Greyhound. I'll be honest, I don't really like this painting. <laughs> it's not my favorite. I feel like I was going for nervous, anxious dog and I ended up with just like grumpy old man dog. So we'll see if you can do a better job than me, but we're gonna start by getting some color for the fur. So we're gonna do a similar color to what we just did in the previous day, which was a Husky. So we're gonna mix up a gray color. And we're going to do that by creating a purple with primary blue and primary red. And then we'll neutralize that with yellow, which is purple's complement. It is opposite purple on the color wheel. So I've got my purple happening now. So you know what? I reckon you can, you know, take a lesson from what I've done here and be able to adjust it. I think my problem was the eyebrows. I made the eyebrows too much of a feature maybe. But anyway, popping some yellow into this mixture now to neutralize it. I'm pretty sure as well from memory, this was taken with a black background, like the real reference photo and a really bright light being cast on the dog. And so I think I was trying to make it darker and more dramatic than I needed to, than if it was in natural light. So, mm. You can see my mixture there is looking very green. So I'm gonna put some red in that to neutralize that. So just using color theory knowledge, picking whatever is opposite the color on the color wheel that we wanna cancel out and mixing that through. And that's looking a lot better now. A little bit more blue. Mix your colors all the way through when you're color mixing because you could think that you've got a great color and then when you actually mix the rest of the colors through each other, you realize it changes completely. A Little bit more yellow and I think we're basically there. So we're gonna get started actually with painting in the eyes before we do any of the fur. So I'm gonna reactivate a brown that is on my palette. I think I've just been using leftover brown for the last couple of Dogtober paintings, but to make that color from scratch, obviously you can watch the past Dogtobers if you want to, or you can just have a crack by putting primary yellow and primary red together to create an orange and then neutralizing that a little bit with blue. So we don't wanna cancel it like all the way out, but just a little bit to turn it brown. And I'm just gonna pop these teeny tiny little eyes in and we'll also pop in the nostrils on the nose too. I think I could have probably just done the eyes a little different to convey that anxious look. I'll talk about that more in a sec. I'm just grabbing some Mars black from my palette and popping in the nostrils. Two little comma looking shapes. We can pop the split down the center as well between those two. Just very lightly. And I'm just gonna lift off a teeny tiny bit under the eyes on the bottom half of the eyes to give it a bit of a highlight. But 
what I was thinking here with the eyes, I could have just made them a different shape. It's hard for me to describe verbally what I'm talking about, but basically you would make the make them into more of a point that pinches up towards the center of the face. Like the eyes would pinch up towards the, oh, I don't actually know how to explain this, but it would give them the expression of like being nervous or anxious or even sad and scared. And I think that if I had have just adjusted the eyes rather than the eyebrows or maybe both together, it just would have had a better impact. But anyway, I'm yapping while we're getting into this painting. So I have grabbed some of the gray color and I have started by painting in the ear. And now I'm just dragging that on top of the head and carefully, carefully going around the eyes. Watering off, like rinsing off my brush so we've got some lighter color and making the right side more highlighted. I'm now dragging that across. We're gonna exclude the nose for now and just bringing a watery color over to the right. Dipping into a bit more darker color for the ear, particularly on the side that is touching the face or would be in the shadow. Lifting off these little eyebrows, which it just, the, the eyebrows just didn't match the eyes. Lifting off a little bit on top of the snout as well. Cleaning up my edges around the nose, again, lifting off the eyebrows. And now I'm gonna take this color down the neck. So we can leave a little split between the head and the neck to define those areas. We also have a little bit of a bottom jaw we need to pop in as well. So carefully popping that in and bringing that color underneath, bringing it down, dipping into some water. And I'm gonna drag that across to the right. So keeping that paler, more water, filling that in, dragging it down, being a little rough as well. I'm leaving lots of little gaps like I'm letting the paper texture shine through a little bit. I'm not being fussed about making this completely smooth. Darker color down the left, nice and rough, dipping into some water and just spreading that all across to the right. I think possibly what I should have done instead of lifting off the eyebrows, maybe painting them in darker would have been the play. I don't know, I fiddle with them a ton during the end of this portrait. So feel free to just do things a little bit differently. I have no doubt you will create a better expression, but I'm just continuing to darken the face here and really make these bushy pale eyebrows shine out. But I'm taking some darker color just down the right side of the snout. Again, a tricky one, front facing, long snout, doesn't make it easy. Dipping into some darker color and I'm just trying to separate here but I don't do a very good job of it like the where the legs are <laughs> I think I should have just not bothered I don't know I kind of cut them out a little bit you can see the the divot or like the the chest is darker in the center so it's kind of bringing out either side of it to look like the legs but I could have just left it all flat gray I think it didn't really matter we're going to paint the nose in now so I'm going to use Mars black for this you're more than welcome to use the gray of the color that we mixed up, but I just thought I would make it stand out and be a bit different. So I'm putting that in and I'm gonna try and keep it highlighted to the right side. Got some gray on my brush now and I'm going to pop a little bit of color on the top half of both of these eyes just to create a bit of a shadow, make it a little bit darker and then we will pop highlights on later. I'm kind of filling in the, the parts that were left white of the paper. Turns out I didn't like that. <laughs> I think it was actually kind of cool. I wish I didn't fill it in. But anyway, in the moment, I must have felt like it needed it. I've gone right around those eyes. I think, again, just like making the eyes smaller. I talked about this in the Golden Retriever one, like youthful, younger animals. They've got big eyes, and I'm just cutting these down and making them small. I'm also taking this darker color and really carving out the snout as well as those eyebrows, which again, I don't think was the right move leaving them so pale, but we live and we learn. And taking a little bit of color down the neck as well. Filling in some more of that kind of white space. I must not have been enjoying it, but I think it should have stayed there because otherwise it just becomes one big gray blob shape. Back into the gray color. Again, on the eyes, can't leave them alone, shading the top half and then drying that all off. 
I'm going to dip into my white now. So my three slash zero, I'm going to pop in the white, grab the highlights and get to work on the eyes. And then we'll do a little bit more finessing. So making sure I've got a concentrated amount on there. If it's too watery, it will disappear when it dries. So teeny tiny little dots in the top half of the eye. Like it definitely looks scared, but like not in the way that I wanted it to, I guess. Maybe I should have done like, like illustrated some movement lines on either side of its body to make it look like it's shaking. It's so cute. I love these dogs. I'm popping in a little crescent on either side as well. It's a bit thicker than I would like, but it's a very, very small eye. I'm going to pop a little highlight under the nostril on the right. Dabbing off some excess after dipping in freshly, and I am going to just further make these pale eyebrows stand out by actually painting white in them, painting some little whiskers coming up. I'm going to do a couple coming out from the chin onto the fur, gray fur. I wish I probably did them a little bit longer, maybe, and definitely a bit thinner. That was a bit chunky. I talked about in the husky one that I have trouble doing whiskers on that side. I often find that it's easier to drag them towards me than pushing them away. With my three slash zero and some of the gray color, I'm going to further just carve in some areas of the face. Again, I'm not really sure that I'm doing any justice <laughs> to the portrait. I think I'm just, again, making it look more aged. And look, there's nothing wrong with that. It was just that the reference photo I was working off, the dog looked pretty young and I didn't manage to capture that. With my larger brush now, I'm just kind of spreading that around, trying to soften the edges so it's not so stark. A little bit of a shadow on the right side of the schnoz. Blending that all around. Just the trickiness of painting a front on portrait. Very hard to make the nose look normal when it is long. So again, just softening the color on the top of the nose and the eyebrows, just trying to blend it in a tiny bit more. Very judgmental looking as well at this point, but we just got to work with what we've got at this stage. Deepening up a little bit under the nose. Just trying to blend everything out and keep it smoother. Very, very fiddly and finessing at this point. Continuing to deepen around the eyes. Possibly used a little too much highlight in these as well. They're such small little eyes that I think the highlight's really taken over them. Just making that ear on the right a little bigger as well. Same with the one on the left. And then we're going to dry that all off. So, you know, I think this portrait could have been finished a few minutes ago, to be honest. I don't know that I make any positive changes here, but I'm going to show them to you anyway. So I'm continually just working on these eyebrows, pushing them back a little bit now by putting some extra color on them trying to make them more pointed up. That's, that's what I was trying to explain. Like I wanted the eye shape to match this pointed angle of these eyebrows. Like I think we got there a little bit. Definitely an improvement from where we started out a few minutes ago, but didn't want to be finessing this much with these portraits. I wanted them to be relatively quick and this one should have been a lot quicker. Just fixing up the shape of the head there as well, which I think helped a little bit too. It's funny how something as subtle as the shape of the top of the head makes a difference. I painted a pigeon recently and its head was a little too square. And as soon as I rounded it out, it just looked like a pigeon. For some reason before that, it looked more menacing. <laughs> it looked like a crow or something. Continuing to lift off color from the snout. And then putting more back on. Even I don't think I know what I'm doing at this point. Just fiddling. A little bit under the chin, on the chest. 
drying it all off and that is our Italian Greyhound. I'll see you in the next one.